even before I said a word about them, before you looked into them, before you were acquainted with even the concept that was presented to you, let alone the reality of the situation, you have an image in your mind of the PMC, the private military corporation. Now, I'm going to guess that this image is pretty bad, at least from your perspective. You see something akin to the Wagner Group doing dirty work for the Russian government, or uh, an enormous military, as seen in the game Advanced Warfare, a company that has more power than nations and is dangerously out of control. You associate it, perhaps, with tyrannical power. And I think, you know, if we're to talk about this in a philosophical sense, Wittgenstein was right about us having pictures in our minds. And it's accepted, really, as common sense today, that there is a commonality between our image of the private military corporation, that 99.99% of us hold, effectively. The world's image has one thing in common, and that's that these firms are working in a military context. Now, I know that seems odd that I'm almost saying that like it's not the case. It makes sense, right? I mean, it's in the name, Private Military Corporation. And the answer is, well, yes and no. And I think that the myth that PMCs operate as or alongside the military, it should be dispelled. Because reducing it to that is not something which I think we should be doing. Uh, in any case, while a mon minority of PMCs perhaps do operate in active combat, the thing you're picturing in your mind, uh, the vast majority of PMCs don't, and the vast majority aren't even active. That is to say they're not really engaging anyone, let alone within uh, a war zone, let's say. So I think we need to, let's say, separate a few categories. That's an important thing to do. I'm going to separate them into four, and it's sort of a matrix, if you will. Active and inactive, and then within those categories, uh, confrontational and non-confrontational. In the inactive, non-confrontational column, we see firms that might organize military documents that fulfill the function of military without fighting. Yes, they are still PMCs, uh, although we probably won't talk about them so much. They are inactive uh, and non-confrontational. In regard to inactive confrontational uh, that PMCs basically have, we might see stuff like security that's hired for events. They are private security firms, after all. And those people who are, let's say, doing event security, they aren't in a war zone, but the nature of the service they provide is confrontational. Next, the active non-confrontational. Now, this may seem odd, uh, but this might be stuff like aid. This might be logistics services that operate in war zones. Important stuff, but it's not act actively going out there and engaging people, and it's not engaging people if it can under you know any context, really. And, of course, there's a grey area in between all of these. But I'm going to guess that you've made another assumption, and that's the final category that I'm going to talk about. Uh, the sort you imagine fighting in a war zone. Guns blazing. Rambo style. Well, while generally the guns can be blazing, they have the potential to be blazing. Confrontational, active PMCs. I'm going to say something you're not going to expect, expect, and that's that the active confrontational PMCs I'm thinking of aren't those traditional military ones. They're anti-piracy groups and they're anti-poaching groups. Wildlife preservation and ship preservation, if you will. So let's talk about this. First off, anti-piracy. In the film, based upon the true story of Captain Phillips, the uh, titular character, who is real, has his ship boarded by Somali pirates, and they want to hold them to ransom and steal the contents of his container ship. And this is a huge problem, uh, and it's a real thing, and it has been for quite a long time, and it was a real problem for a really long time. PMCs, for a while, made op offers to shipping companies and they offered their services to protect the ship. But the shipping companies weren't actually interested for the longest time, and they turned them down. They thought that such measures weren't really needed, that they were perhaps bad for PR, that they were maybe even too violent. After all, our world is civilised. We don't live on the high seas that Drake saw. Well, the area around Somalia, uh, 
around the Horn of Africa does take the form of the high seas of that time, but in a very different fashion, arguably more dangerous. Cutlasses are now Kalashnikovs, gold and rarities from the New World, their cars, clothes, the cargo that a ship carries rather than the booty, perhaps. And everything that results from this brilliant uh, economy of scale, containerization through the shipping industry, everything that that's brought us, it's rather unfortunate that the container ship revolution has brought with it the existence of pirates, opportunists. The shipping firms tried to counter this. They tried the more non-violent means fir first. They tried passive measures, installing autonomous water cannons, as we saw in the film Captain Phillips, allowing ships to make loud noises, creating specialist alarm systems to scare off the intruders. And while this, of course, had an effect, it had some effect, nothing stops Somali pirates like a PMC. And that's what we saw. Once the shipping industry realised that the problem would continue, that their own measures were not doing well enough, measures that, you know, perhaps sunk some Somali boats, um, some of the time, uh, that, you know, may have actually done damage to these Somali people, once they realised that that didn't work, they employed the help of PMCs to protect them, and an odd thing happened. The Gulf of Aden became far safer. People with weapons on board, weapons systems, they could actively protect the ship. They were trained in operations, and they were incredibly effective. They saved not only shipping firms a lot of money, but one can speculate a lot of lives as well, and certainly a lot of very difficult situations. Even active military presence in the waters. We saw, um, you know, a lot of naval vessels, massive uh, communication efforts, massive campaigns to stop piracy in the area. They have had a huge effect, but they haven't managed to fully deter pirates. And while they have been effective, as I've said, they haven't had the same deterrent effect as PMCs aboard. Now, I know I've been talking about the fact they're active and confrontational, but largely, PMCs, even in, let's say, war zones, when they're acting as security firms. The idea of them uh, is perhaps to carry out whatever role needs to be done in order to fight people off, as it is with the ships. But the majority of the time, they act as a deterrent. Somali pirates are far less likely to board a ship if there is a PMC aboard, because they know they'll lose. And actually, what this has led to, whether you see it as a good or a bad thing, is uh, loss of, or less, capsizing. I guess, of Somali ships. They don't even try, meaning they don't sink. Uh, so, overall, whether you think it's good or bad, it's, uh, for even the Somali pirates, a net gain, because more of them are living, effectively. So, that's talking about the more active role they can take. And it does sound awful, the fact that we have to put these military personnel on a ship, because... Uh, there are pirates in the area who want to do harm. That sounds like a really awful situation. But the real thing that people dislike about it is the fact there are non-state actors that are violent towards one another. That being Somalian paramilitary organizations that are piracy organizations, really, and PMCs, private military organizations. Yet, nonetheless, they're clearly off to get pirates. Um... Yet, nonetheless, PMCs really are fulfilling an important role. They're saving the money and lives um, of pretty much everyone involved, and often doing so by means of deterrence rather than combat, despite the fact they are able to do that. And so everyone really wins, apart from the Somali pirates, who sort of win because more of them live, and they don't really deserve to win beyond that. Next, I'm going to talk about PMCs that are involved in fighting off organisations which may be likened to paramilitaries. Uh, the pirates of the land, that being poachers. So, this subset of PMCs, known as PRCs, which is short for Private Ranger uh, Company or Contractor, they are perhaps unlike shipping PMCs. Shipping PMCs tend to put people on boats, and obviously they have training. But PMCs utilise, train, employ locals, particularly those who know the area well. So, they generally employ people, at best, who are ex-law enforcement, ex-servicemen, who are familiar with the area, ideally. Even for the most experienced, 
uh, of ex-law enforcement, ex-servicemen. Training is rigorous, as rangers have to act in a certain manner uh, and you know ensure that they're up to scratch. They have to be trained for the particular environment in which they're operating, which is generally a reserve, a place where there are pretty strict rules. So this is hugely important in stopping poaching. The role of uh, PRCs, private ranger companies, which are PMCs in themselves, has had a huge effect. So without these organizations, without private military organizations that stop poaching, uh, officials within, let's say, certain African nations where poaching takes place a lot, and actually some uh, uh, Asian nations as well, a lot of these official anti-poaching authorities that really want to be taking uh, control of the situation, and often do, in many of these nations, they're simply unable to defend the land properly, and they lack uh, the manpower to stop poachers when they do come across them. And PRCs are hugely important to conservation, and they're hugely important to saving the lives of these you know, people who are actually within law enforcement, because often they're hugely outnumbered which leads to some pretty awful consequences when they do come across poachers. So it's actually really quite important. And these armed PRCs, uh, they promote conservation and they do a, a lot to stop the harmful poaching of all sorts. Uh, elephants for ivory, rhinos, leopard for their pelt, I guess. All sorts that one would want to prevent. So whether you think PMCs are good in you know a lot of different contexts, I think larger firms that manufacture technology, they're not really PMCs. Uh, they're military contractors at best, but they're not ac active military companies. They're not firms that go out there and aim to fight. But what I aim to demonstrate today is that even those firms that are, they are active, they are confrontational, that they are good as well, and it's not just limited to going out and fighting in some sort of war zone. There are other places in which security is needed, and I think most of us would agree that in this scenario, in both scenarios, it's a very good thing, because not only is it largely a deterrent, but it actually saves a lot of life on both sides. Saves money, lives, very good, and that's all we really want. And so I'd say in these particular scenarios, we can debate the more active confrontational PMC that takes on a more military context at a later date. But these PMCs, in my view, are moral. So I'm going to leave it there.